Another thing I wanted to talk to you about, uh, Jennifer, one of my favourite chapters in The Birdway in your new book uh, deals with ant-following species in Latin America. And this is kind of something that I found especially interesting because I've been lucky enough to have a handful of encounters with ant swarms, which is kind of like, we've spoken about it on the show before with Diego, kind of the holy grail of neotropical forest encounters is to come across one of these ant swarms and just hear the sound of all the ant-following birds and all the other species flocking around around these ants. Um, but actually, recently, scientists have discovered that ant following, rather than just a, a straightforward impulse, actually is a complex effort that requires, and I'm quoting from the book, is sophisticated mental skills like learning, remembering, sharing information, and perhaps even planning for the future. Can you shed some more light on that research? Yeah. So for people who don't know about ant swarms, you know, they they originate in a bivouac, which is a, a kind of temporary nest where the queen and the ant larvae um are located and the the raids basically the ants go out and they bring back tens of thousands of <laughs> little creatures to feed to um to the larvae and um the thing about these these bivouacs and the raids is they're actually very difficult to find i mean it's why you know you're lucky when you stumble on one in in the forest they're and it's hard for the birds to find them too. Um, they're really erratically distributed in the forest. They're really well concealed. You know, they're often um, just you know hidden by the the understory. And also, the ants only raid in cycles. So sometimes they're in a, in a really active um, raiding phase, and sometimes they're stationary. They're not raiding very much. And so, the, what the birds do is they actually. Um, anticipate the swarms by keeping track of the bivouacs in space and time. And this is a, a, a really sophisticated effort. They actually go after um, after they've already eaten their fill, they'll go to, to a bivouac site and um, keep an eye on it, basically check out what's happening there. And, um, and they keep, these birds keep in mind um, several locations of these bivouacs. Um, because some are active and some aren't, they and they're the the element of planning is that they're you know they're going to these bivouacs when they have a full stomach, so they're already satiated. It's not about responding to something they're feeling in the moment. It's about planning for the next day. Where is going to be breakfast tomorrow? That's exactly, it, it? exactly. Wow. It's quite remarkable, really, because like I said, I mean, Diego, you've had lots of encounters, I know, with ant swarms. We've talked about it on the show before. And as a bird, it's just exciting to come across those ant swarms because you know you're going to get great looks at some really unusual and difficult to see species. I mean, oscillated ant bird is, is the prime example in the book. But I mean, Diego, did you did you have any sort of idea or con concept that this was this level of planning and sophistication gone into this behavior? I tell you, I tell you, like... Uh... A month ago, I was returning home and I, I stopped at a little place, beautiful forest in the Magdalena Valley, and I enjoyed probably one hour with a you know big swarm that has bicolored ant birds and gray-headed tanagers. I was actually expecting a ground cuckoo because it was a beautiful place. And I enjoy it as always. And I have to say, when you're birding, you could be quick, you could be rushing, but when you get to a swarm, a raid of ants, you spend you know half an hour or one hour just, just because it could you know, be more stuff coming, it could be all these beautiful things. But after reading, you know, that chapter in the bird way, Jennifer really changed my, my, just my way of seeing this because we always perceived it as, as competence, you know, all these wood creepers and ambers and tanagers just competing for whatever is flushed, a snake, a scorpion. And it's, it's not like that. They are relaxed. They are just kind of sharing all these and there is the obligate and followers and stuff so i really really you really you really screw my birding like i felt like oh all <laughs> these all these swarms that i've watched in the past like i've not properly enjoyed some of the aspects of these and i remember when i started studying biology and in 2001 there was the paper on the condor i remember bivouac checking by neotropical land birds and you know we read it it was interesting but now that I've read in your book and everything is interconnected, these obligate ant followers are unbelievable. Like they, they just travel straight lines in between like, you know, possible bivouacs. They're not, they're not just going around and, and randomly doing this stuff. It is premeditated and, and there is tons of intelligence there. It's so smart. Yes, they're so smart. And they're sharing that information. So, you know, they go around in groups <gasps> and it's, it's, you know, usually one, it's like, one 
Let's follow the one. Yes, who has the, who has that information. And the other thing that you mentioned that I think is fascinating is that it's not this, you know, big comp- competitive mess that the birds actually yeah. are, um, yeah. you know, they have... We used to think they, about it like that. Right. And they actually have, you know, guilds and groupings. They exploit different niches. So, you know, you have your, your birds that are on the, the ground. Then you have your birds like the... Uh, the oscillated ant bird and the bicolored, and they, they have the best spot. They perch right above the swarm, and then there are birds that are higher up in the trees, and they're all getting different um, kinds of insects. So it's, and they, as I said, they're sharing this information from, um, you know, drawing other birds in rather than, you know, keeping them out. So it's it's uh, much more cooperative. 